Hello and welcome to the City Manager's Report. I'm Jill Fraley, joined as always by Pikeville City Manager Donovan Blackburn. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon Once to you, too. Once again. How have things been going since we last spoke? Oh, many, Jill, many things to talk about. It is so busy, uh, which is a great thing. Right. And I mean, as we continue to come back to this forum and discuss mm -hmm. various events going around the city, it's always busy. Uh, this week is no different. Yeah. yeah. I have people tell me all the time throughout the week that they get so much information that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So I think, well, good. You know, at least we're doing a good service. Uh, I absolutely. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me when I'm in the public uh, how many people is watching the show, which mm -hmm. we greatly appreciate the mm -hmm. viewers. Uh, and that's what the intent is. Again, through transparency, the intent is to get as much information right. out uh, by the, uh, the, 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 you know, the city government and the city officials that we possibly can to help educate and let folks know what's going on. So it's a great venue. Well, I'm going to run down some of the things we're going to talk about to let okay. everybody know, and then we'll hit the high points, okay? We're Sounds going to talk good. about the fantastic river trail system that we've got going on, uh, new things going on there, half of McCoy tours every weekend. Uh, this weekend, we'll talk about Hibbley Christmas in July and Kids Day in the Park coming up on Saturday. We're going to talk about Jenny Wally Theater, of course, my favorite topic, the retail development. <laughs> and then we're also going to talk about uh, commercial air service, which will take up most of our time, plus... We have a pretty famous person that just got named Miss Kentucky in our, from we our town. We absolutely do. We're d delighted and excited. Yeah, Jessica Case Folk competing in Miss America in January. So we'll talk about all that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, first thing we want to talk about, though, is uh, what's going on tomorrow night. On Friday, of course, we do this on Thursday. Uh, that will be the 20th. It will be Main Street Live. Jessica Case Folk will be there. You can come yes. and congratulate her. But it's also country night. It, it's uh, country kicking night, as Mitch says. Country kicking night. Uh, so they're, we're excited about it. The, these... Uh, uh, you know, these events are very well attended. People are really enjoying them. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a lot of great music, uh, different themes for different events. You know, I, I really commend uh, Minta Cheney and the Main Street Board. Uh, they're doing an absolutely, uh, really, Jill, I mean, they're doing a phenomenal job um, at really trying to revitalize the downtown area and creating not only quality of life issues uh, from the standpoint of music and, and good food, uh, but they're also promoting the area in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. and helping clean up the downtown. Uh, not that it needed it because it's always been a nice, pristine place, but with a lot of the building and the construction, a lot of the things going on downtown, you know, the intent for all those dollars spent was now to bring people in and, and let's have some fun, create quality of life, and hopefully have an economic impact while we're doing it all. I have attended a couple of those, and it has been the best time. And like you said, they're very well attended. There are so many people who bring their entire families, and that is the intent, yes. to be able to come to the plaza on a Friday night and enjoy things with your family. This Tomorrow night's going to be no different. It, and you do have some information. Jessica Casebold, our brand new uh, Miss Kentucky, crowned last weekend, will be there. And you can meet her, uh, take pictures, you can yep. sign some autographs, and just really wish her well. I mean, it's so, so nice to have her to be able to come back home because they do stay very busy. Well, they do, and we're getting her before that she gets hopefully too busy. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, this is a, a, a great honor, um, obviously, for her and her family. I mean, we're, we're delighted. Um, as we talk about uh, Christmas in July here in a minute, I'll make some comments about that. But she, um, you know, to have also Pikeville and Pike County associated with uh, Miss Kentucky mm -hmm. is, is a great honor for our region as well. So, and we've got somebody that, that is a top class, that is a wonderful young lady that I know will represent our area yeah. like no other. So we're, delightful. We're, we're, we're delighted. And, and the, um, uh, I had received several phone calls throughout the week asking what the city had planned on doing to recognize uh, this, this uh, great accomplishment. And we had talked about a couple of different options, but uh, uh, again, based on her busy schedule, she's got several things co coming mm -hmm. up. We invited her to the uh, commission meeting Monday night, of uh, which she was already, her, her schedule was starting mm -hmm. to fill. Uh, but they were, uh, we spoke with her mother, Carol, and, and uh, they were more than delighted to come down to the event uh, uh, tomorrow night, Friday, uh, to where the commission uh, will be presenting her a key to the city. And then Monday night, they will adopt a proclamation for a matter of record uh, honoring her great accomplishments. Aww. So we're, we're, we're excited. And uh, the, the other thing we promised the community, as folks had called, that we would advertise it to giving the community the opportunity mm -hmm. to come down. So, you know, here's uh, we're going to kill two birds with one stone in a, in a sense. We're going to let people come down, uh, take part of some good uh, catfish cooking. Um, on top of some contests and some prize and giveaway, yeah. and then meet uh, the new Miss Kentucky. It's a full night. It, it is, and that's you know that's the vision of the city and the commission and tourism and working with the county is is that we want to create uh, an event in an, uh, every weekend, and that's uh, and as we talk about some of these events <laughs> as we go forward, you'll see that we've done more than that. Uh, literally, <laughs> literally. Let's talk quickly too. I'm going to go down the list here. We're just going to uh, talk about a few different things. 
River Trail System, they're now called the Hatfield-McCoy River yes. Trails, am I right? Yes, that's you're the, correct. That's the name. I do have my official shirt that Jesse <laughs> yeah. gave me and my hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you're, and that's a good point to make, Jill. The hat and shirt uh, officially today will be online, mm -hmm. available for sale. Um, I make a note, there's also a little pig that you can buy. It's kind of cute. Still haven't got the pig yet. Uh, well, we'll get you a pig. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of great products, though, that people can certainly uh, purchase, and the, the shirts are great. They are. Um, it, you know, used to you had to go to the tourism office to acquire them or to purchase them, uh, which we still want you to do because mm -hmm. we want you to understand all the things, the great things there is to do in and around the region. But uh, also, we now have the apparel online. Uh, there's some new uh, trademark designs that w we have come up with uh, and worked with uh, both on the River Trails, Hatfield McCoy River Trails, and on the Hatfield McCoy Tours. Um, and understanding that all proceeds from the sales, uh, all profit from the sales of the shirts, the hit hats, the pigs, the tours, all goes to Pike County Tourism and P City of Pikeville Tourism for the purpose of purchasing a new statue of the McCoy family, uh, Randolph and Sarah uh, uh, McCoy. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we urge people to, 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 to jump in and support not only the uh, local economy, uh, but to have some fun in doing so, yeah. and it, this goes to a worthy cause. And you can also still book your tours online, too. Absolutely. Through, um, you can log on to www.tourpikeville, no, I'm sorry, tourpikecounty.com uh, or www.visitpikeville.com. Uh, uh, is the two uh, websites, and all you do is click on the uh, Hatfield McCoy link, and that will take you to Eventbrite, uh, mm -hmm. which is our booking service now. And uh, you need to do that soon. You know, we talked about during the last uh, uh, last airing, and we have now now been doing this. I think this, this is our sixth week, and we have yeah. sold out every single tour. Well, uh, when I was coming back through town over the weekend, I saw the big white bus, you know, that has been purchased, and. And there were just tons of people getting off of it. And I thought, you know, it's, and I think it was on a Sunday afternoon, actually, that I saw it. Well, we do the tours. You can take, uh, we do the tours on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, the tour on Friday is at 6 p.m. The tour on Saturday is at 9 a.m. And the tour on Sunday evening is at 5 p.m. That gives different times for different folks. Mm -hmm. So because somebody's, whether it's church or, or a family reunion or a picnic going on, it gives you the opportunity to do yeah. so. Yeah, what I thought was great was a lot of people getting off there had purchased their shirts at the yes. tourism office, and they were all decked out in their house fit more. Hatfield McCoy gear and I thought yeah. how wonderful is that because the the shirts are team Hatfield or team McCoy yes. or there's one that says official feudist which I think is hysterical <laughs> it's I have actually I have well I have the two of them um, and then the hats too so uh, you can pick those up like you said at the tourism office yeah. well and and you talk about the bus um, we have a reveal today we've had it we've we've been waiting for the graphics package to be applied okay uh, it was done yesterday and we're actually uh, as I was leaving the office they were going to pick it up so uh, we've got our new logo on the, both sides of both the bus. On one side is the uh, Hatfield McCoy River Trail, and on the other side is the Hatfield McCoy Driving Tour. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's a real neat little bus to, to ride around in. It's very comfortable, air conditioned. Uh, it's you, very nice. It, it, it is really a nice experience. But more importantly, um, and this is why I urge all of our citizens, you know, because we're getting people coming from so far. I think there's 44, 45 states, I think, that have signed the registry books that has been represented on taking these tours, uh, both the river and the, the driving tour. Um, and, and also a neat little thing that's uh, coming up tomorrow, again, we're doing this on Thursday, uh, tomorrow the 20th, is that we've got Letcher County Senior Citizens Group, and that's what we're doing is we're, we're Tony and, and uh, Tackett and, and uh, uh, Jay over at the uh, County Tourism is doing a great job in marketing this and what again our partnership working together is is that they're doing a great job marketing and getting a hold of folks and trying to lure them into the area and they've got a great representation uh, based on their office and, and a lot of great hospitality there at the Hampton, Hampton Inn. And then uh, Jesse and Sean with the city are actually doing the tours. We've, we've rode with Reed and they've done a lot of reading. But the real neat thing is is that you learn about the, the McCoy history from the Kentucky side. It's both a Hatfield and McCoy, but there's a lot of things that was in the series that wasn't accurate mm -hmm. or things that could be expanded on. There's a lot of little neat little things that, that we have found. Um, spoke to Reed Potter not before yesterday and, and uh, have come up with a lot of, they, they actually, I get excited when I start talking about this, but they have actually gone back and have found some of the transcripts from some of the, um, the court cases that were lost. And nobody, so oh, these wow. are item by items of what actually happened because some of this is speculation. Mm -hmm. But instead of speculation, we now have actual facts. facts and facts. So a lot of this can be, and there's a lot of things such as how Perry Klein uh, sold his land versus uh, Double Lance taking his land. All that was part of this court case deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was talking about the senior citizens. Uh, they've contacted Letcher County senior citizens, and tomorrow on Friday we have 100 and, uh, 150 senior citizens that will be here in town 
they're going to the landmark to watch the documentary first. Uh, after they watch the documentary, they're having a neat little uh, a luncheon up there, and then we're going to divide them up into groups of 75 on two different uh, school buses, and then uh, Jesse will take one group, and Sean will take the other group, and they're going to do the actual the, the touring. Wow. So it's things like this that are bringing, again, these uh, people into our community. They're spending money while they're here, but more importantly, they're having a great time. Mm -hmm. They're enjoying our community. They're seeing all the neat things, and then they're learning a lot about the site. So, you know, I, I guess that's my point is, is that we don't, that, you know, our local people, this is available to them yeah. too. Well, you know, I guess I never thought about larger groups like that mm -hmm. coming in and scheduling group tours. What a wonderful opportunity yes. for people outside of our area. I think just about our surrounding counties, Letcher County, Johnson County, Floyd County, all of those groups that can come in that did see the documentary that have a huge interest and they can do it now as a group. I would never thought of that. Well, one of the things that I've been working on for two weeks now is I, I'm on the executive board for the Kentucky League of Cities mm -hmm. and we're, we're trying to put together a package deal for them. Um, so that they can offer any city official. It'll be a hotel, uh, it'll, uh, basically a trip for two. It'll be a hot hotel, uh, a lunch, and then the tour uh, and one day, and then the river t tour the next day. So it'll be whatever the price comes out to. But uh, we'll be marketing that to 395 cities across the state of Kentucky. Yeah. So uh, again, there's a lot of opportunity. We're working, uh, had I spoke to the uh, tourism group about doing um, this, um, uh, next month or month after whenever school goes back into session and working with the county school systems across the state and uh, again producing a package for these kids and hopefully coming here on a historical tour mm -hmm. um, and I'm also on the Kentucky uh, the Kentucky uh, School Board Trust for Insurance Trust and and have a lot of great relationships with a lot of superintendents across the state so the intent is to try to get them also involved and again bringing these kids and these groups into our community so we have a lot of great things they yeah. offer and it's not just these tours, and that's why I say it's very important for folks to come in and visit the Pike County Tourism Commission office, um, because uh, Tour Bureau office, because it is a phenomenal uh, experience in there because they've got a lot of neat brochures, a lot of things that a lot of people will not be aware of that is, it is in and around this, this area. Something else that's coming up is the Pride Cleanup Project. Yeah, there is a lot of things happening with uh, with the Pride Cleanup Project, and and you know I want to commend these. In today's, I think it was actually uh, yesterday's edition of the uh, News Express, there was an insert, and I think I have it here, uh, talking about Pride and all the things that they accomplish. Um, you know, and, and the reason that I kind of tied this together is not only their up and coming project. But they've done a lot of things for the river trails, for example. They did a, a cleanup um, for the river trail. We've got a grant in right now for another cleanup on the river trail. So we're able to take care of a lot of our amenities that we're talking about in, in sense of, produce, or, uh, of uh, 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 highlighting tourism in the area. Um, and we're utilizing these great groups. But if you look in, uh, again, this edition of the News Express, it talks about all the neat, neat things that uh, Pride has done from the area. But again, uh, 2,869 illegal dumps have been eliminated, 699,422 bags of trash, and additional 172 tons of trash have, have been collected, uh, 958,000 tires have been recovered, 188,696 uh, uh, junk appliances and additional 42,000 42, tons of junk appliances have been recovered. And I could go on and on. This is a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal thing. Uh, Congressman Rogers uh, has put forth. We've got a lot of great volunteers uh, in our community. And if it wasn't for programs like this, the people that would come to their area would see the, the, the dirty side. And right. we don't, you know, we, and that's not what we represent. We've got a lot of great people. We've got a lot of great uh, the volunteers out there that do this. And I'm just glad that they're part, that we've got partnerships both in Pikeville and Pike County uh, government in making these things happen. So we appreciate it. I mean, I want to give them a, uh, a tip of my hat, but also wanted to talk about some of the things that they do for our community. I can remember, I think it was in, I want to say 97, 98, that Congressman Rogers initiated the personal responsibility in a desirable environment, the Pride whole yes. Pride Initiative. I remember going to Corbin when they had the first cleanup there and they brought the massive boat and they cleaned up all the trash and I thought, my goodness, I can't imagine all of that in our rivers and streams, but you go now and there's hardly anything there and right. it just speaks volumes about the, the volunteers that get out on the weekends and have different children's groups that go out and pick up. It's it's an amazing effort. It really is and, and, and the key word here is volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, these are people that have pride in their community, no pun mm -hmm. intended. But uh, they do, they have pride in their community and they do a wonderful job and we really appreciate them. We do. Uh, what about the uh, the Visitor Station and the Artisans Alliance? Now we're getting ready to start the Bear Project. Yes. <laughs> the Bear Affair, if you will. Painting of the Bears. I was in Cincinnati over the weekend and they have, you know, their pigs there that they paint. You know, we have the horses in Lexington, pigs in Cincinnati. And this is going to be the same thing. We have these gigantic bears that are going to be right. painted. Uh, I'm really excited about it. One of the, uh, the initiatives that 
that has kicked off, uh, actually this coming Monday, um, is the train that is located on the boulevard. Uh, originally, it's, it housed the Pikeville Pike County Tourism. They have relocated to the Hampton Inn, which was a great move because now they've got 120 people a night that are tourists, basically. Mm -hmm. They're from outside the area. Uh, with the new Hilton Gardens being built, they'll have 250 people that they can cater to on a, on a daily basis. Um, so the commission had looked at the train and, and had tried to determine what the best use of it is now. Uh, we had talked about moving it out of the area. We're actually we're working with the, the Elkhorn City and some other groups. Um, but what we determined was it was best left where it is. It, it has some uh, historical value to it. It's a unique visual. Um, so what we're getting ready to start is restoration project. Starting this Monday, we're going to be doing some sanding on it and, and clean up some of the rust. Uh, we're going to repaint it, and it's going to become the new ha home of the uh, Artisan Alliance mm -hmm. uh, and also the new visitor center. Actually, yesterday, uh, we were interviewing for the new director and the, the new position. So, uh, uh, and, and understand the difference, because I do want to define this, of what a visitor center is versus a tourism commission or a tourism bureau, is that a visitor center is when somebody comes in and they're looking for whether it's where a specific location is or where to go or where a restaurant is or something like that, their job would be to direct them. If they're looking for tourism attractions and such, then they would be directing them to the, the Bureau of Tourism, which is only one block down the street. So it's a partnership. Um, the, uh, the intent is to share information versus tourism initiatives. So we're excited, and then on top of that, it gives us the ability to showcase some of our local artists. Right. And then on top of that, as you said, we're really excited, Jill, and I know, again, you're part of this uh, board, uh, but we're real excited about getting this bear project rolled out. Uh, this is going to be really Well, neat. what I think is so interesting is that, I, you know, when you're in Lexington, you see the large horses, and obviously they're to scale. Then you see these pigs. These bears are huge. Yes, they are. I mean, they're big, big statues, and they're not sitting, I mean, they're standing. <laughs> yes, they are. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see all the different uh, takes on how you can paint a bear. Well, I'm, you know. I, I've seen some of the, uh, the renditions, and I'm, I can't wait to see them true life. Mm -hmm. I really have. Now, this is a huge weekend. Let's let's get that out of the way because we have a lot to discuss uh, still yet to come today. But this weekend, we have Kids Day in the Park on Saturday. Hillbilly Christmas in July does their enormous effort this weekend. So uh, let's talk about what's going to happen on Saturday. Okay. Uh, Saturday is a big, big day. Again, starting at 11 o'clock uh, down at the Harley Shop. There's mm -hmm. a lot of festivities going on. They've got the blood drive. They're trying to break the record. They have five blood mobile yes. buses that they're going to bring in and try to get 100, 100 units of blood to set the record. We, or, no, I'm sorry, 300. Uh, 300. 300 units of blood, and, and I believe we can do it. Uh, mm -hmm. we do, they, they do hold the, uh, the state record thus now, but they're trying to beat that record mm -hmm. with the five blood mobiles. So you know, we urge, again, people, it's a great cause, not only to celebrate the, the uh, Shriners Hospital mm -hmm. uh, and to have a little fun with picking and grinning and, yeah. and all the other festivities, that, that games and things that goes on down at the Harley shop. But then uh, you know, my passion and uh, my wife's passion is also the Kids Day in the Park mm -hmm. event, which will kick off at, at 5 o'clock. And again, uh, this is our uh, fourth annual event. Uh, my wife and I have, uh, uh, Jimmy Caney came to us when we first started this Hibley Christmas in July, him and Randy Jones at the time, and we talked about not only the adults having fun down at the Harley shop, but doing something to mm -hmm. where we could celebrate the, the lives of the, uh, these kids. So uh, this Saturday, starting at 5 o'clock, all children are invited, not just, not just the Shriners kids. We, the Shriners kids are given special attention when they come in, um, but uh, all kids from the community are invited. We have a lot of neat things, such as free hot dogs and drinks, uh, inflatables, games, prizes. Uh, we've got some great giveaway items, uh, such as uh, a Wii, an Xbox, a, a, a Nook, uh, a, I know a, scooter. Some, a scooter, or some bicycles. Um, so some great prizes to give away at the end. We've got the uh, helicopter flyover at 6 o'clock. Uh, that'll be new and unique. Helicopter um, parade, they told me. <laughs> they're, they're parade. We're, we're looking forward to seeing this. I don't know how this. that's going to work. I'm anxious to see. And then uh, we've got uh, the, um, the parade at 7 o'clock at the ending of the event. And then, Jill, your favorite. And we've got uh, Summer Santa that will be there. The Summer Santa. You were telling me about this this week, and I, I just kind of thought, really? What, what, what's he going to look like? So, well, uh, Santa uh, comes out each year for us, and he's in his Bermuda shorts, and uh, he's in his T-shirt, and he's trimmed his beard, and, and uh, you know he's trying to cool down in this warm weather. Mm -hmm. But the, we, we take uh, ki pictures with the kids. Dusty Lane will be there uh, to take the pictures. We'll put them online for the parents to, uh, uh, to pull off the, the website. And then we've got, a, again, another special guest. Uh, at 5:30, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have Miss Kentucky uh, yeah. there. And I said earlier that there was something I was going to mention. You know, she uh, 
uh, as I said, my wife and I have been doing this for four years, and we have a lot of volunteers that help. Uh, Pipeville High School has had mm -hmm. numerous students, and some other uh, county organizations, kid organizations have had, we've had some students that have come in each year to help us, and uh, Jessica was one of mm -hmm. those that, that, have, that has been there for us uh, in the past. So we're excited to have her, invite her back, and uh, at 5.30 she's going to be there. Uh, we'll put her on the radio for a little bit, and then uh, we'll have a, a live remote, and then we'll have some pictures. Mm -hmm. She'll love that. She's so involved with the community, and she loves children. So, uh, as you know, she's been a fantastic volunteer. Happy to have her. Yes. If you need any information um, about Hillbilly Christmas in July, their website is hillbillychristmasinjuly.org. Their big ride is on Sunday morning. They will leave the Harley store. They, Jimmy says, stands up, kickstands up at 10 o'clock, and <laughs> they will travel to Lexington. We'll start registration, I think, at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll pull out at 10 o'clock on the dot. It's a lot of fun. Uh, again, last year when we when we took out, it was uh, the most torrential downpour mm -hmm. of any ride I've ever taken. Uh, <laughs> it was very unique. Uh, but this year, it's, it's uh, I looked on the Lexington has zero percent chance of yeah. uh, rain and. Uh, Pikeville is 10%, so the weather is supposed to be beautiful. It'd be a great day for a ride. It will be. One thing I do want to mention that Jimmy actually told me this morning, again, this is on Thursday, is that they're still in need of some toys. Yes. They collect toys all year long. You can, if you want to buy toys, you can go buy them today, tomorrow, or even Saturday. Right. You can take them to the Harley store. That will be the drop-off. They have, he said it's about three-fourths full, so they just need to fill up a little bit more, but you can take those toy donations to the Harley store, and uh, they will take care of it from there. Also, they're selling chances on that $17,000 motorcycle. Well, I urge wow. people to take the chance because <laughs> the time is now. Yeah. Um, and, and again, just briefly, I want to commend not only Jimmy and, and Randy's vision, uh, because if you look at the park up at Bob Amos, and I appreciate the commission's willingness to work with me to, to, to donate that land for the park, um, but also there's a lot of volunteers and a lot mm -hmm. of board members that make this event mm -hmm. what it is today. Yeah. And we've taken a lot of money to the Shriners Hospital and a lot of toys uh, over the years, and, and uh, it's, it, we get, have a lot of fun in doing it. But right. I really, really appreciate those people that make this thing happen. Yeah. And if you ever have a question, please know that 100 percent of the money raised yes. goes straight back Absolutely. to the Shriners Hospital Absolutely. and the kids that, get it the, that deserve it the most. Absolutely. And it's a great event. It is a great event. Get us up to date quickly on the Jenny Wally Theater Project. I saw some of those people in town yes. this week. Yeah, we had a great event the um, uh, night before last at the Blue Raven. Um, some of the uh, contributors and some of the sponsors of Jenny Wiley uh, was in town, and, and uh, Dr. King um, mm -hmm. uh, hosted the event, which we greatly appreciate. He's a great guy. Um, and. Uh, the, we, we had the architects in town to, so that some of the folks could meet the architects and see kind of what the thought is. Our building committee met yesterday and things are moving forward. I am, I am really excited about where we're heading with this. Uh, we looked at some of the materials for the interior part of the building and the exterior part of the building so people are really going to be surprised. If you've, if you've not seen the rendition, uh, the Jenny Wiley actually I think they have it online now, mm -hmm. uh, a copy of the rendition of what the building's kind of going to look like on the outside, but we're now starting about talking about using the interior and what we're looking at doing is using some local uh, materials, wood, stone, some of the things that are actually uh, manufactured here locally. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, I'm really excited about it. Uh, we look probably uh, within the next 30 days, uh, we should have our estimates on cost. Probably within the next uh, two months, we should have our bid package ready to go. So the intent hopefully is uh, September, October to actually start break ground. Very good. Another uh, project that's continuing to be updated is the retail development project. Well, and I'm going to be very brief on this too again, Jill. We're still working. I know that uh, last time I, I had a brief glance over it because we ran out of time, but uh, spoke to the, the only hold up again is, is the uh, uh, trying to finalize the deal with the post office. I spoke to the post office uh, twice this week. Uh, we are supposed to have the contract in our hand by tomorrow. Um, then um, hopefully the week after that we will have signatures and then that will start the due diligence process. It will probably take another three months to finalize everything. Uh, but the developer is very eager. He is, they are calling me daily asking me where are we or can we sign. Mm -hmm. um, so things are really moving ahead. So I don't want folks to know that, that uh, Unfortunately, when you're dealing with federal regulations and, and red tape, it takes some time. The post office is working diligent with us as hard as they can to try to get this deal solidified, mm -hmm. but uh, we're almost there. But uh, things are moving forward. The developer is excited about all the folks that he's got signed. I'm getting calls daily wanting to know when this thing's going to start, but uh, it is moving forward. 
All right. One more thing I want to ask you about, and we have a big event coming up on the 29th at the Expo Center. WWE yeah. SmackDown is coming to town. That has been so, so popular. It always is. Well, but other is. events coming, too. Uh, we, we have other, and I guess I'm going to put a teaser out there. There are some other events coming I, I, that uh, Steve will be announcing with the Expo mm -hmm. Center soon. He uh, just emailed me yesterday. He's been working on an event. Then emailed me yesterday. He said, fi finally finalized, mm -hmm. exclamation point. So uh, stay tuned to uh, uh to the media and to the Expo Center's website at mm -hmm. some neat announcements that are coming up. Uh, so again, things for the Expo Center is moving great. Uh, if you, I, and I urge anyone to log on to the city's website, Jill, look at the community calendar at all the events that's going on every single weekend. Mm -hmm. You'll find there's tons of things to do here locally, uh, whether it's at Jenny Wiley, the Breaks, Whitesburg, Pikeville, uh, it anywhere is comprehensive. around the region. It, it certainly is. It, it really is a great time to be in eastern Kentucky. It certainly is. One thing we've got to get to now, and this is something that we've talked about before. It has been in the news constantly over and over and over again. And I'll, all I'm going to say is commercial air service <laughs> and let you take over. Okay. This, this, um, let me start out by saying that this is a significant issue. And the city commission, I spoke with several of the commissioners this week, and they've asked me to spend the last part of this program today kind of updating. And the reason that I've got to do that is, is that this past Monday, uh, July 16th, uh, the News Express, hosted by Jeff Vanderbeck, we had a, a public forum. Mm -hmm. uh, the, forum the forum was well attended. We had uh, uh, Senator Jones there, Representative uh, Keith Hall, uh, uh, Representative uh, Leslie Combs, um, the chamber, Jarrett with the chamber, Bill Hickman, the, the, uh, the chairman, of the airport board and myself were the panel. Um, and then we had a lot of uh, community participation. We had a lot of comments. Uh, so it was a good forum. The pr and, and Pike TV did, was there and they recorded. The problem is, is with technology, sometimes things happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, our uh, audio track uh, went down. So about two thirds of it, uh, you couldn't hear. So unfortunately, we're not able to air that. We were really hoping we could. So what I've been asked to do is to kind of go over some of the highlights and some of the history, and then I'm going to go through the most important part of this is the PowerPoint. As, um, because I think it's a, it is important for the community to, again, to understand the issue. And I want to start out by, by saying again that, that this is a significant issue for the community. It's a significant issue for the market. Uh, it's one that, that this community has worked on for many, many years. Uh, and as I said, I'll go through the PowerPoint here in just a moment. But let me, before I do that, let me give you a little bit of the history of what has transpired over the last several years. Uh, and I'll probably have to, I'm going to have to unfortunately look down, so I apologize, because there's a lot of, a lot of things I don't want to miss. Right. But in, in starting out, I started it in, um, I started as city manager in January of 2004. Uh, shortly thereafter, I think it was around March or April, there was, in, in that was in 2004. In 2003, there was a study uh, a community assessment study. This one, again, Governor Patton was in office and they ordered, uh, he had ordered the uh, Industrial uh, Development Council along with the uh, Cabinet of Economic Development to come to Pike County. And what the purpose of this was, and it was done on May the 5th, 2003, is a community assessment team visited Pike County to, bri to provide some guidance uh, to the county's economic development efforts. So the intent in 2003 was to look at what we needed to do from the standpoint of opportunity for economic development in Pike County. And I'm going to flip back to the very back of this, and, it, and there's a column for opportunities. Mm -hmm. There's five bullet points listed for opportunities, um, one of which uh, was continued development uh, as a health center. And again, with the development that Pike, uh, Pikeville Medical Center has had, obviously you could check that one yeah, off. Yeah, that one's taken care of. Taken care of. Another one is business development tied to educational base. Again, if you look at what the Technical College and what UPike has done over the past year, we can check that one mm -hmm. off. And knowing what UPike is doing and, and heading forward with great vision under Governor Patton and with James Hurley, uh, I had a good conversation with James Hurley this week, and the, the university is growing. Uh, here in a couple of months, they'll do the, the ribbon cutting for the new medical school. So again, I'll check that one off. Uh, development of cultural assets. As we talk about the <laughs> Artisan Center, Jenny Wiley Theater, I could go right on down the line. We could check that one off. Mm -hmm. um, okay, D and E, I tie them together. D is airport development options, talking about commercial air service. E is uh, connection enabling business to compete globally for Pike County. One runs hand in hand. When you're talking about competing globally, you're talking about infrastructure for, for IT, and then you're also talking about, again, commercial air service, open ourselves outside of just regional mm -hmm. travel. So again in 2003 was a significant issue and I'm not going to take the time because I did read this 
Um, and this report is available on the city's website if anybody wants to read it. It's a good read. I've used it in many, many presentations. Uh, on page 13 of this, um, there is a gray box, and I've got it circled, and I won't read it um, going through it, but there is a, it talks about destructive behavior in Pike County, and it talks about the things that will keep us from advancing. And some of the things that you hear about, the again, the backbiting, uh, the rude behavior, the lack of respect, the, uh, the, the unwillingness to listen to others, the jealousy, and all those things. I'm not saying that all those things are going on. But what I, the reason I highlight that is, is what I'm saying is, is that we need to pay attention as leaders in the community to make sure that we're not adhering to some of those traits that are being distinguished. But again, this is what they say will keep us from, from moving forward. And these are the experts in the field. Now, I bring that up because the next thing that happened was in 2004 when I came on, which was less than a year after the study was done. There was a community group that met over at the Pipe Library, and there was probably 60 people there. And during that community group, we talked again about, uh, because this study actually says one of the things that we need to do is to create a, a, a community consensus group of, of, of both business and political leaders, bring everybody together and talk about what we need to do to advance. Well, during that meeting, after a lot of discussion, and it, there were several meetings that took place, and it was probably one of the best, best forums that I attended, I have attended since I've been here, that out of that group of, of people from the, from the financial community, the educational community, from, again, private citizens, the chamber, the city, the county, uh, there was three goals that were established. One goal, was, the first goal was is that we needed a quality hotel to support the Expo Center and the area. And again, this was in 2004. Thus, the Hampton Inn. And that was, the, part of the group was assigned that responsibility, and I was actually part of that responsibility. Check. The second issue that was talked about in, during that group, and by the way, we had another Hampton, or Hilton Gardens coming also. The second initiative was, was the need for new restaurants for the area. Check. Yeah, did that. The, thir the third item was the need for commercial air service. So, 2003, 2004. 2006, the, um, I think it was in 06, 05 or 06, the Ad District received some money and they did a comprehensive plan, a study talking about the need for commercial air service and they targeted part, what came out of the study was, uh, was there was a tremendous need and that the, the, the targeted area should be the, uh, the Pikeville Pike County Airport. They looked at other airports in the region, not saying there wasn't other airports, but because of the ILS system, because of the 5,000 foot runway, because of some of the components that they have there, it was the mo and the location centrally, it was the most suited area, uh, need for, for or area for commercial air service. Now I say that because then our county judge Wayne T went to. I remember him going to that board meeting, and and supporting not only the report but the need for Pike County Pike will be the need for commercial air service. So I have always said, and I want that very clear, that the county judge is for commercial air service. The question at hand is right now is the issue for funding. Right. So, uh, and that's what's being debated back and forth right now with with some open dialogue. Um, so, again, to, I, I've given you the history up through 2006. What happens then in 2009 is is that um, or, or uh, around eight or nine, there's a company out of uh, that just launched a commercial air service out of Somerset, or uh, Arizul, mm -hmm. and. Um, so there was some highlight. They came up here. There was a forum hosted over at the Hampton Inn. Uh, a lot of the community came out and supported commercial air service. Well, the company went under. They left Somerset. It was a bad experience. There was a lot of national, some national press on it. But what I want to hyphen here is, is there is a major difference in what we're talking about in our result. Th this is apples to oranges argument. What they were was a commuter air service, a private in independent service. that They came in. They basically took some subsidies and they left. What we're talking about now is is a, a, a company that is tied to a national air, commercial air provider, and I can't disclose the air provider's name, but we're talking about a national air provider that you will go through the scanning system. You will get Once you get on the plane and you pull into a hub, you get off that plane onto your next plane. The other system is you pull into an airport, you still had to go through security, you mm -hmm. had to go through all, you buy one ticket on, on the, whether, whatever the national website is, and then you're through. It's a apples to oranges difference. So we are very blessed right now to have a provider that is willing to talk to us. Now, once, once we determined that, I contacted um, uh, Congressman Rogers' office and seen what we could do to pursue commercial air service. And uh, he put me in contact with uh, Chris Gurgel, who is now a senator, who was just elected to the Senate, mm -hmm. Senate-elect. Uh, Chris introduced me to a gentleman by the name of Luke Schmidt. 
and uh, so I started working with Luke. Luke was working with the city of Elizabethtown uh, on their commercial providers. He's worked with several other communities in the expert. He's an aviator. Uh, he's a registered lobbyist, uh, has a lot of connections, understood. So anyway, we hired him. Uh, what was first determined was there was a need for an additional study uh, because some of the information that was provided through the first study wasn't, wasn't full. It needed, there needed some updated information. So we did that. Uh, we, we, we pursued a study. Once the study was completed, we then applied for the, small, the, the Federal Small uh, Commercial Air Service Grant, of which I went to Washington and met with Congressman Rogers on the need for his support on this, on this grant. Congressman Rogers wrote a letter of support, was very supportive, understood the need for commercial air service within the region and opened up eastern Kentucky to the area. So again, was a catalyst in, in helping to move us to where we're at. Um, we got through Congressman Rogers' meeting um, and then what happened was is that Luke had submitted his invoice for doing this work, we had decided. And at that time, again, it was the county, the city, the chamber, and the uh, um, I'm leaving, the airport board was at the table. Well, when Luke submitted his invoice, um, he contacted the county and they had not paid. So, and the, the response was is that the county at this time is not, does, is not willing to participate. The, the fiscal court did not want to participate. Uh, we took that as is, is that they were backing off. Mm -hmm. Their position on it was is that's not what they were saying, that, that what they were saying was we support commercial air service, but over the years the county has invested a lot of dollars in the, in the airport and did not feel like that it was justified to spend additional dollars to do additional studies. So whether it was a miscommunication on our end or a miscommunication on our end, somewhere there was a breakdown in communication, we assumed that, that again the fiscal court had withdrew. Uh, and, and they're saying that that was not the case. Now, there, again, no hostilities, no aggravation. That's just the fact is what my point is on both sides, understanding that they still support commercial air service. So that's a lot of the stuff that you're reading in the media right now, Jill, is based off of, of that issue because some of the concern with the magistrates was is that, well, we don't have the facts. How can we make an informed decision without the facts? Well, then what happened was is that I went to, um, we went and met with, uh, uh, Leslie Combs, Representative Combs, and myself went and met with uh, Mr. Hayden uh, with the governor's office uh, who supported the initiative. This was before session. We then went into the session understanding that we would need a subs to subsidize, uh, and that's anybody, even on a national letter, that's what the federal government does with all these commercial air services, is they subsidize mm -hmm. the national names. The same thing happens in, in local communities, is that they're subsidized to bring them in. So the $750,000 grant that the city received um, we is part of the subsidy, but it will take about $2.5 million for a two-year guarantee in order to lure a commercial provider in here. Now that doesn't mean we'll spend the whole $2.5 million, and that means it might mean that we will. We won't know, and I'll get into some of the data here in just a minute. But uh, once w that we pursued the uh, the the, the two seven hundred fifty thousand, we needed the million. So I went down and met with the legislators and uh, on numerous times with the chamber, uh, with Luke, with the airport board in support. And the intent was to go after multi-county coal service because it is a regional project. And that's, there's a big difference, and let me explain that because it's been in the press, of what the difference between single county coal severance and multi-county coal severance. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's been some, some coverage saying, well, why can't we use that for water lines or, or other local tourism or other. And that's not, that's what single county money is for. It's for single county projects. What a multi-county. For individual county. county. For, in, for individual counties. Multi-county is a multi-county project that benefits the entire region. So you have to have a project that two counties have to sign off on by, by a resolution um, that supports this initiative. So that's where the hangup is right now is that, that Floyd County, they're interested because obviously where the airport is is on the Floyd County line. Uh, and then also Knott County, and I'll say several counties are interested, but those are the ones that are, we're, we're looking at supporting uh, the resolution. So once we pursued um, the, the money with the legislators, and what happened was is, is they were all in favor, but the UPIKE issue came up. Mm -hmm. And when the UPIKE issue came up, it derailed a l the, the, not, no, the legislators not knowing how the multi-county money was going to be spent. So they had to back off to find out where we ended up with the UPIC issue before that they could levy the money or line item the money for the commercial air service. Well, then what happens is is that the UPIC issue goes through the end of session into a special session, so we were not able to levy the, the or to uh, put the line item in. So then what happens is it reverted back to the count having to go back through the county. Um, if the legislators didn't legislate it as a line item, which they couldn't, uh, because of the UPIC issue, then then it falls back to Department of Local Government, DLG, 
and the governor gets to line item th these dollars. So, and this is a big issue because what's going to happen is, is that the governor is going to take all these millions of dollars and decide where they go. Well, what happens with the multi-county project is you submit an application, which we have done for this project, and um, it requires two counties to a resolution of support. We've got one county, but we don't have the second county yet, which is Pike County, and that's what's being debated in the fiscal court right now. So um, after doing this, um, we, we had some, we've had some hang-ups in the sense of communication in, in questions being asked, is it a vital service, will it work, um, how will it work? Well, we went to the county judge um, and had a private meeting myself and, and, and Bill Hickman with the airport board before all this stuff broke in the media and said we understood that, you, that the fiscal court opted not to want to participate. However, let us, let's explain to you now what we have and where we're at. So uh, we did that in uh, two different meetings. The judge, again, um, uh, very passionately said he supports commercial air service, but he still has some questions. The court still has some questions as or not uh, whether they'll support this initiative. So I went, um, we also in the meantime went down and met with uh, Secretary Hayes with the Economic uh, Development Cabinet who also have supported the initiative. In the meantime, we've also received letters from Senator McConnell, Senator Paul, Congressman Rogers, uh, obviously our local representatives, uh, Combs, Hall, and, and Jones. Um, we've received, um, when we replied for the Commercial Air Service Grant, we had out of 60 or, I can't remember, 60 or 80 different cities that applied for this uh, grant, we had more letters of support from local businesses and any other community, which is partially why we got the money that we did. So it, an overwhelming support for the need for commercial air service was there. Um, so where we're at now is is that we're running out of time um, before the governor is going to um, to grant this million dollars that is needed. And the fear is is that if we that this money, if we don't get it, then it's going to go to an area outside of Pike County. It's going to, it could go to, a, uh, and more than likely will go to a non-coal producing county because there's 30 some applications in right now, and the, we're the only one that does that does not yet have a resolution of support. So that's kind of the history. I went through it relatively quickly. There's a lot of information mm -hmm. to cover, but what I wanted to do is go through a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And, and as I said, be, from the standpoint of education, it's extremely important for the community to understand what the issues are. So if you'll bear with me, I know it's a lot of a lot of. No, but it's excellent information because when you see something like that, it's much easier to understand. I think. Well, it it is, and you know, Jill, the importance of this is is you know I'm reading a book on, and I, I'm going to link this back to. It's funny because everything we talk about is what happened to the McCoys, but I'm reading a book about the happened to the McCoys mm -hmm. right now, and there and it's a unique twist. And whether I believe some of the stuff that's in there is a mute issue, but one of the things that did kind of strike me is it, it talked about again back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, time frame when when um, when rail was first introduced into eastern mm -hmm. Kentucky. What the theme of or what the basis of the book is is saying that the feud was based not on the pig and not on uh, the Civil War, but based upon the Industrial Revolution of eastern Kentucky. And that took place is what the issue is is when rail was introduced into Pike County and when coal came about. People got jealous because there was a lot of uh, a lot of wealth that then followed the coal right. industry. But the point that was made is is when the people when the big rush from the people on the east coast started moving to the west coast, that they bypassed the Appalachian Mountains. They went through Indiana, they went through Ohio. The reason they did that was because the terrain was so much easier to, to maneuver around. Uh, there wasn't as, as much wildlife and some of the other things. But the point that I'm getting to with this is, is that what opened up our region, the Appalachian Mountains, was rail. Mm -hmm. It was mass transit. It was a way for, pe to, for goods to get right. in and goods to get out. This argument is no different. With our, our economy under attack right now, we're in a position that we need to open ourselves up to, to, to trade. And there's no better way to do that than, than through air service. And I know there is some skeptics out there right now, and I'm, I'm reading some things, uh, postings online and some things, and it, you know, it ceases to amaze me that sometimes that our biggest, our biggest pullback is our own people and, and not giving something a chance. Let's say it doesn't work. And you know, my point is, is that we give it two years to work. I believe it will. The statistics shows that it will. Uh, one of the things you'll see in this presentation is, is that there is a, um, and this isn't in the presentation, I did want to share this, is there is a 13 county area that's within our demographics that, um, that this air service will, will touch. It's Breathitt, Floyd, jo Johnson, Knott, Letcher, McGough, and Martin, Perry, and Pike in Kentucky, Mingo in West Virginia, uh, Buchanan, Dickerson, and Wise in Virginia. Uh, out of that, that's, uh, po there's 345,000 people in population. 
according to statistics, and these are true statistics, even in the downturn economy, there's 121,598 passengers each year out of our demographic area. That equates out to, and those people are going to 335 cities a year. That equates out to um, 333 people just in those counties alone per day flying. What we're looking at doing is bringing in either a 19 or a 37 passenger plane, uh, depending upon which company that we're able to go with, if, if we can, can convince them to come in. If that happens, then that means that there's 17 flights a day that comes out of our region. So will this area work with just one flight a day? I think so. The statistics shows that, mm -hmm, that, that the demand is there. So that's what I want to get people to understand is, is that as, the, the, as our education, our medical, and all these other fields uh, expand, we need commercial air service. Um, now, let's go into the slides, and I apologize, no, uh, a lot of information. But um, the, again, the project goals is, is to link Eastern Kentucky to, the, to global air service, as I was just mentioning, through using PBX, which is the Pikeville Pike County Regional Airport, uh, and to recruit a regional airline. Now, what I want people to understand is, is that we're, this is one bump, uh, one hurdle we've got to get over that if we do not get the funding, then it kills the whole, the, the whole deal. Also understanding that the FAA is looking at reclassifying the Pikeville Airport. If that happens, then the runway would be shortened. Fit, there's 50 planes right now, currently at that airport, that, that will be in jeopardy of being able to use that airport. Mm. Existing, 50 existing planes. So it doesn't just impact the future, it impacts the present. What would save this is, is the reclassification of the airport through commercial air service. Um, so again, uh, and, and I do want to make this point too, this is not my PowerPoint, this is Luke Schmitz, this is mm -hmm. what was presented, so if I get some of the facts off a little bit, Luke will have to correct <laughs> me later. Uh, again, and the overall intent is to establish a commercial air service to a connecting major hub. Uh, the progress to gate, I've already talked to you about the feasibility studies uh, in 2007-2009, uh, the intent to recruit air service, and 2010 to develop a new market profile, which is what we've done. Um, progress to date in 2010 was to begin working uh, with six airlines. Uh, we have done that. We've received our $750,000 grant, and so far what we've whittled it down to is we've got two, again, very reputable carriers that are tied to national. That's the key. This is not an Arizona. This is not a Somerset issue, which we'll see right. again in a minute. This is, this is, this is the real deal. Uh, I, I mentioned to you there's 345,000 people in a uh, 13 pipe of Virginia, West Virginia counties. Uh, again, 121,000 people flying each year, equating out to 335 flights. And as you can see within the yellow boundaries uh, of where uh, the Pikeville Airport is in the middle of that hub. Um, and the reason, and it, the question is, is, well, why do you use just this area as your hub? And this is the middle, the cutoff point to where anything outside the yellow area, it would be shorter to drive to a, another airport, whether it be Lexington, uh, Johnson City, Kingsport. So everything within the yellow, it would be closer to drive to Pikeville. Okay. Uh, the airport, one of Kentucky, the, the PBX, which is the call for the Pikeville Pike County Airport, it's one of the most modern airports uh, in Kentucky. It has a full instrument landing s system, which is known as ILS. Uh, it's got a 5,300-foot runway, which is very important because it, there's, if you go anything shorter than that, then it's tough to get an actual uh, uh, air, air flight. We're looking at this Dash 8 unit. Uh, but this uh, the airplane that we're looking at can uh, take off and land on our uh, strip. Uh, and again, a convenient location because of where, where it's at, it's you, near US 23, 460, 80. Uh, um, we would have free parking, so there's some additional savings there also. Uh, and again, PBX is surrounded by seven connecting hubs. So we're looking at the various connecting hubs that we would be able to go to. We're looking either, we're targeting either a 19 passenger or 37 passenger uh, turboprop plane. Uh, I already talked about the uh, differences from the Somerset issue, and I won't go through all that again because I already told you. Uh, this is a total different, this is what they call a 121 carrier, which is certified through the FAA. Uh, we, it's a complete one-stop deal. And folks can read on the screen, they are some of the things I've already covered previously. Uh, why is this important to Pike County? And again, this is all about jobs. It's about protecting our existing jobs while creating new jobs. It's opening up our region and unlocking the regional's potential. And if you look at our, whether it's the in existing industries that we have, legal profession, medical, uh, tourism, um, educational, 
uh, energy, all of that is related. This would this would have a, a great impact on that. And uh, um, Ray Jones and and W. Keith and, and Leslie Combs have made some great points. And one of the things that, that stuck stuck with me was uh, Senator Jones made a comment talking about where would we be today if we didn't think big enough? Where would we be with the cut through? Where would we be with the medical center? Where would we be uh, with the expo center? And then uh, W. Keith was talking about uh, a recent uh, recruitment of a, a um, of some overseas uh, industry for that's buying some of our coal. And the problem mm -hmm. and embarrassment that he had was is he had to tell these folks from across the seas that they had to drive three hours into our market before right. they could meet with us. And that's a it's you know, Jill, when I met with the developer uh, for this major development, I had he wouldn't come to Pikeville. I had to drive to Lexington to meet with him in the in the, in the Lexington airport. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. Um, what goes into the recruiting facility? Again, it's uh, demographics, it's airport, it's the uh, local. Uh, support and guarantee, it's confidentiality. Um, so all these things that we, I, again, I previously discussed, um, we meet the demographics. That's All these things are met, which is why we have these two providers that are interested in the market. Uh, but in order to get somebody here, you have to have a revenue guarantee. This is how it works. It, it, it works all across the country here. Um, but it's an investment is what it is. And what, uh, which I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a slide here in just a second that I'll, that I'll kind of touch on that as well. Uh, this is a standard practice, again, for the industry, uh, both in local communities and on a national level. This is especially important uh, to, for new and small, unimproved, unproved markets, and as, as Pikeville is. Uh, so we were required to create a revenue guarantee for small community, air, and we've done that through the Small Communities Air Service Grant. We are doing it from the Air Bank. The, ch the uh, Chamber of Commerce has already taught to numerous market businesses, and what an Air Bank is, a travel bank is, is it's local businesses that will give a guarantee, for example, I'll use uh, the Pipeline Medical Center. They would step up and say, okay, we guarantee that we will, in the next two years, we will buy $20,000 worth of tickets. They put up $20,000, but then, then they use that $20,000 for air. So they don't lose it, they use it. Um, so, but the, the provider understands that we've got half a million dollars worth of guaranteed tickets over here that are going to be used, so it's more attracting to them. And then again, the intent was to go after coal severance. Uh, the proposed Pikeville Revenue Guarantee Plan, uh, which again we've already discussed, um, if you look at a model out of uh, Kansas, um, Kansas uh, used the same um, system, I guess, in what we're doing. And what I think it's on the next slide. What they found was is that they, were, they only used about two hundred thousand um, dollars of their um, uh, of the money that was put up. So after two years, the Kansas's uh, project uh, was self-sustaining. Um, so here you've now opened up a, tr a market. They've improved the quality of life. They've really grown exponentially. They've, they've done a great job. And again, I'm, as I'm talking, I'm letting the people go through the, the, the comments here that's mm -hmm. on the screen. So as you can see, this is a proven model. It will work. Uh, and again, our demographics, our study shows that it, that it will as well. Now we're looking at the, guarantee, the revenue guarantee uh, package. And uh, this is what we're looking at for funding, $650,000. I said it's a $750,000 air grant, but 100000 of that is used for marketing. One of the things that we have to guarantee is that before that they come, we will run a, a, a blitz of paper, radio, TV, showing that Pipeline now offers commercial air service. So you'd have $650,000 uh, in, in funding for a guarantee. A million dollars was for the, the multi-county coal severance. Uh, and since West Virginia and Virginia are participants, we've also gone to them and asked them for 250 and 125,000. And then again, the travel bank is a half a million, which equates to the total, equates to the total $2.5 million mm -hmm. for the guarantee. Now, again, understand how this works. We're saying we guarantee 2.5 million. That doesn't mean we're giving them 2.5 million. And that's a big difference that people, again, aren't catching on to, mm -hmm. Jill. What happens is, is that um, let's say it takes them a million dollars a month to operate. I mean a year, I'm not a month, I'm sorry. And let's say that they get enough ticket sales that generates $950,000 in revenue. That means that out of the million dollars that we would have for them that year, we would only write them a check for $50,000. Again, hypothetically, it may only we may only be giving them a half a million a year, or we may give them the whole million. Mm -hmm. Everything is predicated on how many tickets that are sold. So again, the 250 doesn't mean we'll spend 250. And if you look back at the model, the other community that put up $2 million only spent 200000 of that $2 million. Um, and again, this is somewhat the same slide, but it goes into what, uh, uh, what each one of the grants uh, awards was and who we have been addressing for support. 
Um, in order for us to receive the multi-county tax, then of course we have to have the minimum support of two counties. I've already told you that uh, Floyd County has already uh, adopted a, a resolution. Uh, Pike County Fiscal Court, we, Luke has gone before them on two occasions. This past week they tabled the issue again after an hour's um, debate. Uh, and, and I do want to say this, and I forgot in the beginning. I want to thank uh, Magistrate Murphy and um, <clears throat> Magistrate Dotson, Hillman Dotson and Leo Murphy. Both of them attended this meeting on Monday. Uh, they listened uh, to all the comments that were made. There were some great comments made. Um, they listened. Uh, Magistrate uh, Dotson made a, a great uh, some remarks about working together and listening to the facts and was very supportive of this initiative, said he was for commercial air service. Uh, Leo had some questions. He felt that those questions were answered. Uh, so I appreciate them coming uh, very much. I appreciate their willingness and to work with us. And, uh, you know, together, as, as Hillman Dotson said, we can accomplish. Um, and, and what, again, I'm just displaying up on the screen uh, what comes next and where we're at next, which is everything that I've discussed, is about, you know, the need for the resolution. Um, a couple of other comments that aren't on the slide. So, again, the intent of the slide and intent of what Luke has, has tried to show is not only the need, but the process, how it will work, the statistics and the numbers that show that it will work, the demographics that show that it will work, um, so all the, the airport itself that shows that it will work, so all the components are in place. Uh, but what we need now is the million dollars. The problem is, is that we can't go and recruit the commercial air provider until we have the guarantee. Right. We only have until October the 27th or 28th. If we don't have an agreement by that time with the provider, then we lose our seven hundred fifty thousand dollar grant. And that could go anywhere. It can go. It will go back to the federal government, and it'll go to another community to compete against okay. us. If we don't get the million dollars, which understand the governor supports, the um, our federal leadership supports, our uh, uh, Stumbo, our Speaker of the House supports, our legislator supports. So if you've got this much support and you're submitting an application, normally that means that you got a good chance of getting it. Mm -hmm. So this does open ourselves up to the opportunity. It opens up our, our, our community. And then a couple of other folks, there were some very uh, compelling speeches made during the forum. Uh, Dr. Samuel King um, was there and he made, he, he done a great job with a lot of passion at uh, understanding, I'm looking over so much time I got left, <laughs> uh, understanding of what, what, why this is important to our region. And one thing that I met, he was actually at the Jenny Wiley event. He hosted the I event, as I said. Uh -huh. uh, and and uh, Dr. Keene said, you know, Donovan, I was really passionate. And, and one thing that slipped my mind, and if you get the opportunity to say this, say this. He said, you know, I have polled over 150 doctors in our area. Every one of them want this service and need this service. And that's what this is all about, is what the need is. Our, our industry is, a big part of our industry, Jill, is the energy industry. There's no doubt about that. We fully support it. We're suing the EPA. The commission's on board with that. But we also rely upon the medical profession. We rely upon the legal profession. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't, um, this isn't the, the educational profession, the finance profession. These are also major keys to our economy. And these are the people that desperately need this service. Instead of, you know, I'm getting ready, um, my wife and I, it's our 25th year anniversary on the 31st. Next month, uh, we're going down the, to the Caribbeans for our mm -hmm. big trip, celebrate our 25th. But our, the only flight that's available is we have to leave at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can drive, make it down there. So I've got to spend money for a hotel. I've got to drive down there. Right. I've got to pay for car. Where if I had a ticket opportunity here, it would it just for convenience alone, it would have been worth an extra hundred dollars because right. I'll save that on hotel travel and all this other yes. such. Right. So those are the things that we're trying to to demonstrate. Danny Van Hoos, again, another basically what I just said. He that was what he was talking about was is that he had um, had a recent trip and it cost him money to do so. Uh, Helen Brown, who works for the Technical College. She has family over in England overseas and talked about the inconvenience of, of her family ability of coming over mm -hmm. and, and visiting because of the inconvenience. Joel Thornsbury, again, from a business perspective as a pharmacist, at all the places that he travels, he says he spends over $15,000 a year on ho to other, other things that just gets him to the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, uh, oh, I said Helen Brown. I'm sorry, Elizabeth Cole was with the, the technical college. I'm sorry. Helen Brown, which is Jim Brown's wife, had, and I've known Helen for, uh, and Jim for a long time, great, great people. She had one of the most compelling uh, discussion points, done a wonderful job just really saying we need to work together. Mm -hmm. This will better and open our community. This will create the jobs. 
so it was a great, it was a good meeting, a great points. Um, if anybody has any questions about this, you know, there, um, we urge you to contact your magistrates, to contact the city commission, contact Luke, the chamber, us, and ask because it's an important, important issue. Is there another meeting scheduled that we can look forward to? Um, the next, well, the next, me the important meeting will be the fiscal court meeting, and that's a good point. Uh, Luke Schmidt wrote the uh, the county magistrates a letter and the judge a letter um, asking for a special call meeting. Um, uh, a copy of the letter went out yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and their next meeting I, I, is, the, I, I can't remember, it's the first week, I think, of, of uh, next August. month. And uh, then they have agreed, hopefully, to take up the issue then. The fear is, as time is running out, that if the governor doesn't already spend the money, mm -hmm. um, it may go somewhere else, and there might be a, an issue, or and we're going to lose out. Because mm -hmm. if we don't get the money, runway is going to be shortened, commercial air service is done forever. I'm going to let that be the final word. Sounds great. Donovan, thanks for chatting with us. My pleasure. Thank we'll you, Jill. We'll see you next time on the City Manager's Report.